This is the story of St. Chad. Most of our knowledge of St. Chad comes from a single impressive source, Bede's ecclesiastical history of the English people. The Venerable Bede, often called the father of English history, was born in the year of St. Chad's death and was himself a pupil of Trumbert, one of St. Chad's pupils who, he says, instructed me in the scriptures and had been bred in his monastery and under his direction. St. Chad was one of three brothers born in Northumbria, possibly of a noble family in the 620s. The name Chad is Celtic rather than Saxon in origin, but nothing is known of his background. The brothers were educated at the monastery on Lindisfarne under St. Aidan. The religion practiced here was the Celtic form of Christianity that had been introduced into Britain in the 3rd and 4th centuries, probably from Gaul. It differed in many forms from that introduced into England by St. Augustine and his followers at the end of the 6th century. There were technical differences over the dating of Easter and the shape of the tonsure, but more important, it advocated a strict type of monasticism derived from that followed in the Egyptian deserts by the earliest Christian monks. St. Columba founded the most celebrated of these Celtic monasteries in Britain, on the island of Iona in 563, but the largest was that at Bangor Iscoed, which was destroyed in 616. The monastery on Lindisfarne had been set up by St. Aidan, one of the monks from Iona, at the invitation of King Oswald of Northumbria. Subsequently, Sed was raised to the rank of bishop as he worked to establish Celtic monasteries among the East Saxons. However, his name is mostly remembered for founding a monastery at Lastingham on the desolate Yorkshire Moors, where he along with his brother Kinnebil and the other monks and many clergy fell victim to plague in 664. Only one small boy survived by the intercession of Chad. In response to Ched's dying wish, Chad succeeded him as abbot. Chad was chosen by Oswy, King of Northumbria, as Bishop of the Northumbrian See, while Wilfrid, who had been chosen for Dera by the sub-king Alcfrith, was absent in Gaul seeking consecration shortly after the Synod of Whitby, 663-4. Faced with a dearth of bishops in England, Chad was unwise enough to be consecrated by the simoniacal wine of Dorchester, assisted by two dubious British bishops. Wilfrid, on his return to England in 606, found that Alcfrith was dead or exiled and retired to Ripon, leaving Chad in occupation. But in 69, Theodore, Archbishop of Canterbury, restored Wilfrid to York and deposed Chad, who retired to Lastingham, but soon reconsecrated him to be Bishop of the Mercians. This unusual step was due both to the new opening for Christianity in Mercia and to the excellent character of Chad himself whom both Edius and Bede recognized as being unusually humble, devout, zealous, and apostolic. Chad's episcopate of three years laid the foundations of the See of Lichfield according to the decrees of Theodore's council at Hartford, which established diocesan organization. Wulfer, king of Mercia, gave him 50 hides of land for a monastery at Barrow, Lincolnshire. He also established a monastery close to Lichfield Cathedral. His exploits were known throughout all Mercia. St. Chad was known to have retired from time to time to the bottom of a small well where he could contemplate and pray without ceasing. The people would say that they knew when St. Chad was in his well, a light like that of the sun would shine from the bottom of the well. St. Chad was seen in the uncreated light by countless many. His humble prayers could easily cure illnesses and demonic possession. A gifted man of prayer, he was also a source of forgiveness even to those who would seek his destruction. King Wulfire was a pagan, but also a good statesman. He used Christianity to control his subjects. He secretly despised the faith. One day the sons of Wulfire, princes Wulfide and Ruffin, were out hunting a deer near the saint's cell when they approached the saint and asked about the one called Jesus. So struck by the holy elder's words, they both asked to be immediately baptized into Christ's holy church. Wulfere, so enraged by the actions of his sons, killed them with his own hands. Afterwards, filled with such remorse, the king suffered in both body and spirit by the loss of his children. He was counseled by his queen to ask the holy elder to forgive him and to hear his confession. As he approached the holy hierarch's cell, he was witness to a great sight, the uncreated light of Tabor that shone upon the saint's visage. The king fell down in prostrate and begged his forgiveness and to truly bring him into the orthodox Christian faith. As a penance for the murder of his children, the saint told him to build churches and monasteries in the name of Jesus Christ. 
He did so, and up until the end of the saint's earthly life, King Wulfir remained a humble servant of the Holy Elder. Chad died on March 2nd, 672, and was buried in the Church of St. Mary. At once, according to Bede, he was venerated as a saint, and his relics were translated to the Cathedral Church of St. Peter. Cures were claimed in both churches. Bede described his first shrine as a wooden coffin in the shape of a little house with an aperture in the side, through which the devout can take out some of the dust, which they put into water and give to sick cattle or men to drink, upon which they are presently eased of their infirmity and restored to health. May Britain become orthodox again. St. Chad, pray for us.